Okay, let's do this. Uh, I want to talk about artificial sweeteners today because uh, I have like some testimony about it and uh, and I think it's so important. I, I actually think it's crucial, like crucial to what you, you guys are trying to do with weight loss and health. So um, this artificial sweeteners are like a recurring demon haunting me in my life. And um, I think that they are doing more damage to people than we know about. And I'm not talking about the whole like aspartame causes rats in laboratories whole thing. I'm talking about the effect on weight loss on the cephalic, I think it's pronounced cephalic response, the hunger response to them, and also the potential insulin trigger that happens when you consume them. So I'll tell you what happened to me. Um, so I was doing really well and then September, um, I gotten down to like a weight where I, I was looking in the mirror and going, whoa, which I don't anymore because now I'm used to my shit, but, but from where I come from, I was looking in the mirror going, whoa, I think I lost like, um, I don't know, close to a hundred pounds, something like that. And so I, uh, I, I started, I did that thing. I did that, that pride complacency thing where I'm like, I got this, you know? And I can have a diet soda every once in a while. I can have like one every few days. It's not gonna hurt me. I can have it with my refeed, whatever. And then um, what does that turn into? Well, well, I can tell you right now, and I'm not talking about the science, because you can go, you can go on Google like I did and look up the science, and you can look up and like see the studies, like, oh, sucralose probably spikes insulin, aspartame maybe doesn't, all of these things, and you can read about the cephalic response. But I'm telling you about my personal experience. And this is not the first time because when I got the few times that I got derailed completely from strict carnivore, because I was strict carnivore on and off, mostly on for 10 years. The times that I got derailed by that, it was almost always diet soda, okay? So this time I was like, um, you know, I've got this on lock and it's not gonna be a problem. Uh, but it is every single time it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. And it's not only with making me hungrier, which it definitely, definitely does. Definitely makes me hungrier, but um, my weight loss stops cold. And you're probably thinking, that's impossible. If you're not taking in any calories and all you're doing is drinking Diet Coke, um, ew, not Diet Coke, like Coke Zero or whatever, uh, Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar, which is a thing now. I should not be talking about it because it sounds too amazing. If all you're doing is drinking Diet Soda, then you should not be keeping weight on. How is that possible? Well, let me tell you a little story about how it's possible. It's called insulin. Insulin is the fat storage hormone. If you are consuming something that spikes your insulin, your body's gonna be like, oh, that's our signal to store fat. Let's go ahead and do that. So I could do a three-day fast and lose nothing. And then trigger my, um, it triggers my hunger so bad that I overeat on my refeed. That was a pattern that kept happening, kept happening, kept happening, kept me stalled like for like five months. And I'm blaming everything in the world but, but the diet soda because I love it. Like I love it. I love it. I wanna take a bath in it. I can quit food for three days. I cannot eat for three days easier by far than I cannot have a diet soda for that's addictive. It is addictive. And I want to read more about the maybe potentially chemical addiction uh, aspect of it. But I will tell you from firsthand personal experience over and over and over, it is addictive. Okay. So I finally got so effing sick of Stepping on that scaling up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. About three pounds, five pounds, five pounds, four pounds, four pounds, ten pounds, ten pounds, eleven pounds, like for five months ish. I don't even know how long. Forever. And so I did two things fairly recently. One, I went back to 
strict rolling 72s. I've been doing all sorts of long fasts and getting too hungry and breaking up early and then binging on my refeed and gaining the weight, but I just, ugh, 72s, sweet spot. Hard now at my weight, very hard, because artificial sweeteners. So, went back to 72s, because I'm, I have a group right now that's on 72s, they're doing awesome. I have five people in this group and they're just, all of them are kicking ass. So, you know, I'm motivating them, motivating them, motivates me. I'm like 72s, bro. Go back to 72s. And here's another thing. And I've talked about this, I think briefly in other videos, I'll talk about it again. Zero carb refeeds. Animal sourced foods only. Some of you will tolerate dairy better than others. But I'll tell you right now, if you're eating a mixed diet and you don't tolerate dairy well, uh, zero carb, carnivore, whatever you want to call it, is so gut healing that you will probably find yourself tolerating dairy again. I went from being lactose intolerant, or so I thought, to, wait a second, cheese is supposed to give me the violent liquid shits. Why have I not shat in six days? Oh, that's because your gut has healed because of six months of carnivore, and now cheese has the effect on you it's supposed to have, which is that it's binding, okay? So, <clears throat> I'm not lactose intolerant anymore. Um, lactose intolerance really started after I did like uh, 18 months of vegan. That's what kicked it off. Anyway, that's another video. But that was a long time ago, like 20 years almost. So, um, zero carb, extremely gut healing, extremely hypoinsulinogenic, I think is the word I'm looking for. When you eat, your insulin's gonna go up, period. But some spike it more than others. Some spike sugar more than others. So when you are eating um, these animal sourced foods, especially meat, especially meat, you have to be careful with some dairy, your insulin uh, response is, is much lower than other foods. And the inflammatory response, therefore, is much lower. So it is the original, I mean, that you, you see all these like anti-inflammatory diets, cut out tomatoes, cut out grain, whatever. The original anti-inflammatory diet is meat, bro, meat. So um, when you're eating, you know, animal sourced foods and taking it easy on the dairy and sticking to high fat, low sugar dairy. So heavy cream in your coffee, you know, um, you know, a little bit of cheese is fine. You want to be careful. We, well, you really don't want to do stuff like milk and yogurt because, uh, even yogurt that is plain with nothing added is, is high sugar. There's a lot of lactose in it. And, and the same thing with milk. Um, so you want to stay away from those, but, um, you know, my refeeds have been ground beef. I like raw ground beef. I know a lot of you are gonna think that's disgusto, but uh, I like it. When, you, when you've eaten meat for a long time and nothing else, especially when you're not fasting, so you're eating meat like twice a day, um, it gets old and it starts to feel heavy and greasy and brown, I don't know. And so eating it raw, um, it's just like refreshing and good. I would put a little bit of like horseradish on it or sriracha or something. Um, a lot of like strict meat only people do the, the raw meat thing. And so, I don't know, I'm sure the FDA would tell you not to do it or whatever, but ain't nobody died that I know of. So I do it, uh, do what you're gonna do. But, um, but when you're eating that, uh, Oh, but my refeeds lately. So they've been like a little bit of meat. I had some raw ground beef. I had some cooked ground beef. I had some cheese and I had some, uh, gosh, I think that's it. Okay, so, um, and then tomorrow I'm gonna have um, a ribeye or two and then I have some leftover raw ground beef I might eat. Okay, um, so when you're eating that way, you are going to have my personal experience, less hunger. I cut, oh, the other thing I did was cut out artificial sweeteners, which you probably figured that out by now. Cut out artificial sweeteners. So no more sweeteners. I'm not tasting anything sweet ever. 
The most taste of sweet I get is heavy cream in my coffee. I put nothing in my coffee but heavy cream on refeed days and it tastes sweet to me. Okay, heavy cream or um, no, no sweeteners, uh, um, animal sourced refeeds and, and 72s. And what I found is um, since I have gone back to zero carb refeeds and completely cut all sweetener to the bone, gone. Even on refeed days, I don't even have it on refeeds. Um, my hunger is infinitely more manageable. I have less rebound weight gain. Um, so in other words, you know, the, the day you refeed, um, you know, the next morning, you'll probably have put back on weight. And it can vary anywhere from half a pound to three pounds, four pounds, if you really, you know, I mean, you can go way up there if you're like, if you eat something really inflammatory and you, you retain water. So less rebound weight gain, and I'm starting to have a net weight loss again. Um, finally, so, uh, learn from my mistakes. There's a saying that only a fool learns from his own mistakes. So learn from my mistakes. Don't learn from your own why. Why go through what I've been through, what I've already done it, and you can just listen to me. Um, if you're struggling with hunger, if you're struggling with weight loss, cut your carbs. You don't need vegetables. If you're interested in that topic and whether or not plants are uh, di uh, diagnosisdiet.com is a really good source. I might do a different video on that, but cut your cut your carbs to the bone. Eat animal sourced foods. Cut out artificial sweeteners if you haven't already. Um, you are going to have an easier time. You're going to have faster weight loss. You're going to be able to get through this cutting bullshit quicker and get to, um, you know, the rest of your life where we're maintaining and building muscle and living our life and not having to obsess over the scale every day. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you're not in my Facebook group, feel free to join. It's called Fasting Focus. Answer the membership questions or I will not approve you. Fasting Focus, your first order of business when you go to that group is to read the guides section. It's essential. Um, if you ask questions or post or comment and you haven't read the guides, I will be able to tell and I will boot you. Um, if you can't take 15 minutes to read some shit, um, you do not have the commitment or the patience to be successful at this. And there's no point in you being in the group. Um, and if you can't follow instructions, there's definitely no point in you being in the group. Uh, also, I um, am available via DM on Facebook. Um, and you will find me, you can find me through the group. And I do offer group coaching classes, private coaching sessions. And um, I actually am about to offer some I'm about to introduce some new ways to get um, sort of programs and courses for me. Um, what else? Uh, I have more videos on here. Watch them. Please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Fasting Kristen. I'm on Twitter, Fasting Kristen. I'm not that active on there yet. And um, what else am I on? And you can reach me by email, fastingkristen at gmail. So I hope this has been helpful, instructive, et cetera. Please feel free to comment if you have questions. Hit me up if you're interested in getting started with fasting. And um, it's the beginning of Lent for Orthodox. I might need to do another uh, video on that because I have some thoughts about that because Orthodox are basically vegans for like half the year. And I need to talk about it because I think other, other Orthodox uh, carnivores have talked about it too, but I might need to do a video putting my two cents in, but, um, uh, I'm kind of, I'll be doing a reversed Orthodox fast. Um, and I'm not yet a, I, I'm not yet chrismated, so I don't feel super conflicted about it because I'm not officially, you know, Orthodox yet. Um, but, uh, it is something that keeps popping back up in my life where I'm like, oh, I need to deal with that. But anyway, I'm eating carnivore right now for the foreseeable future. I feel great. I'm not hungry. And um, and the first like maybe 12 hours without diet soda was hard. And now I really don't miss it because I, I look back and I'm like, man, that was really messing me up. 
So anyway, happy uh, Sunday and beginning of Lent, you guys, and I'll talk to you soon.